Hello again. In the last video, we reviewed how to transfer the loads from the part that is going to be connected to the other part uh, through the weld center point. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the center of the weld and also other properties of the weld. So, if uh, we recall from the a static course or sometimes in a strength of material if we have a cross section t h t and then let's say b keep it as t y bar is always calculated according to sigma a i y i divided by sigma a i the same as x bar a i times xi divided by sigma ai just to review this uh, it's better if we go with a numerical uh, example assume we have a channel shape 100 millimeter 200 millimeter and also 100 millimeter assuming the t is constant and is 10 millimeter so for the calculation we know that the x axis is exactly in the mid but for y-axis, we need to find out location in horizontal direction. So this is what we are looking for. And typically, we take one baseline with the distance of x-bar. And now we are going to determine x-bar. Here we have one rectangle, which the area is 100 times 10 millimeter. And also the center of this rectangle to our baseline is going to be 50 millimeter. Also, we have this vertical web, which the height will be 200 minus 20 millimeter, which results in 180 millimeter. And the center is only 5 millimeter from the Base. I can write down area will be 180 millimeter times 10 millimeter and X will be 5 millimeter. Now, if we go with the equation, it will be 100 times 10 for the, the flange and then multiply by 50 millimeter as x as far as we have two flanges we can multiply it by two and then plus 180 times 10 a square millimeter times 5 millimeter divided by 2 times 100 times 10 plus 180 times 10 so it is 28.7 millimeter now let's uh, have a look on welds usually welds are with a thin thickness i mean here if we look at the example that we went through the thickness of the profile is only 10 millimeter but the other dimensions are 200 millimeter typically for weld calculation we do not consider the thickness for the calculation and we assume that it's a line for line calculation we ignore the thickness let's check how it would affect the results if i just go with the center line so the center line will be up to the center of the web which results in 95 millimeter width of the flange so it will be 95 millimeter as a line it's not an area it's just a line and the vertical will be 180 millimeter and again we will have 95 millimeter as line now the horizontal axis 
location is in the mid and we are going to calculate the vertical axis which is in the distance of x bar from the for example left base line instead of area now we are going to change area to line so in this case y bar will be sigma li times yi divided by sigma li and x bar will be sigma li times xi divided by sigma li so we do not have area anymore we have only lines let's check the solution here we don't need the y bar for this example but we need to calculate x bar so x bar will be 95 millimeter times the distance from the center to the base will be 47.5 millimeter and we have two of this plus 180 millimeter times zero divided by 295 millimeter plus 180 so it will be 24.4 The difference looks to be around 4.3 millimeter. But if we have a close look, we consider that this is in the center line. It means that it is 5 millimeter offset from the corner or uh, from the edge of the profile. In other words, here X bar should be five millimeter more than x bar in the line s sketch which here we can see that the difference is 4.3 millimeter quite close and the accuracy is pretty enough so in the weld calculation uh, for the properties of the weld we assume that it's a line instead of assuming it's a it's an area and calculate everything according to the line not the area so in that case for all welds area of the weld will be sigma li then times omega and omega represents the weld leg size so if uh, we follow this instruction x bar will be always sigma li times xi divided by sigma li and y bar will be sigma li yi divided by sigma li and what will come after moment of inertia about x-axis moment of inertia about y-axis and also polar moment of inertia so ix will be sigma ix0 plus a i times d i square we will go through two three examples to understand this better and i y will be si summation of i y zero plus a i times d i the first d i is always in y direction and this is in x direction and polar moment of inertia is ix plus iy so these are the equations some notes that we have to consider is that uh, if you are dealing with uh, this kind of weld with the length of l and thickness of t let's assume this is x and this is y so moment of inertia about x will be l t power by 3 divided by 12. As far as compared to length, t is quite a uh, small value. We assume that t power by 3 is uh, smaller than t and it's also uh, smaller than t power by 2. So in all equations, we ignore all the power by more than 1 of parameter t so it means that this is taken as to be zero 
and iy will be for example tl3 divided by 12. one more just simple example before we go through the numerical example assume that you are going to calculate the moment of inertia of these two lines which we know the center of the weld will be here this is l and this is t so when it comes to calculation of moment of inertia about x axis i x zero is this one so i x zero here will be zero as i explained and i y zero will be here which is t l power by 3 divided by 12 and then from the center of this specific weld to the center point of the weld in the vertical direction this is d in y direction and in horizontal direction for example here dx is zero let's go through one simple example uh, with numbers assume we have one line here 100 millimeter length and as i explained the thickness can be completely ignored and you can assume always the thickness is t so you don't need to uh, even if you have the weld leg thickness i would recommend do not uh, enter it into the calculation if you are writing a matcat code or other things then that might be totally fine but if you ignore it still that is quite fine thickness is t and let's assume we have also this the same part in the distance of 150 millimeter and I change this to 120 that is a better number for this calculation first you need to determine the center of the weld in this case as far as it is completely symmetrical then we already know the location of X and Y it doesn't matter if you select Y and Z uh, how you feel better just select the uh, axis and coordinate at, according to your model or uh, how you prefer i x zero for this will be zero i y zero will be t times 120 power by 3 divided by 12 144,000 times t the same goes for the other part and now I'm going to write down the i x about the x axis of the entire weld. So it will be summation. We have two welds times zero plus because i x zero is zero. Area of the weld, each one is one hundred twenty times t, and then times the vertical distance between the center of the component up to the center of total weld so it will be 75 millimeter that's all we have nothing left i y will be two times i y zero is t times 120 power by 3 divided by 12 plus there is no distance between the y-axis of the center line here we can see that the y of this component is exactly in the same or aligned with the uh, total weld y-axis so as a result we do not have any distance in horizontal direction so this will be 2 times 127.5 power by 2 135,000 t and it's always millimeter power by four millimeter millimeter power by two and the thickness will be also millimeter here also 120 is millimeter which is powered by three and then multiply by t which will be millimeter power by four 
so 288,000 T again millimeter power by 4 then for polar moment of inertia you just need to add ix plus iy so IV, ip will be ix plus iy and you can see that you have only t then it will be 423,000 t millimeter power by four that's it let's go through one uh, more example which is a u-shaped assume this is the weld that you have uh, around the section and here we know that the center of the weld will be in the mid in vertical direction but in the horizontal direction we need to calculate i consider this as the baseline for calculation of x bar giving us the location of y axis so x bar is sigma li times xi divided by sigma li the length of the top flange is 100 millimeter times the center to the left or to the baseline is 50 millimeter and we have two of this top and bottom plus 200 millimeter times zero there is no horizontal distance between the center of the weld and also the baseline divided by 100 millimeter times 2 plus 200 millimeter it will be 2 times 50 100 divided by 400 and it will be 25 millimeter so that simple calculation would result in the position of this center of the weld now if we review what we learned in the previous video this is the center point of the weld now we need to bring all the loads from the source to this point and now we have to calculate moment of inertia about x and y axis this is x and this is y so for each part we can write down the moment of inertia about x and y separately so this will be i x zero will be 100 times t power by 3 divided by 12 so it will be counted as zero for the other part which is the vertical weld part moment of inertia about x is now t times 200 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 about x axis about y axis i y 0 this case will be t times 100 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 and this one i y 0 will be 200 times t power by 3 divided by 12 which as t is going to be powered by 3 we count it as 0 and also we can write down the area of each party so a of this one will be 100 times t and here area will be 200 times t the last but not least would be the distance in vertical and horizontal direction of the segment of the weld to the center point of the total weld so here we can see that this distance is 100 millimeter and the horizontal distance is going to be 25 millimeter as far as the distance towards the baseline is 50 millimeter and x bar we calculated it is 25 millimeter so it will be 25 millimeter for the other case or the other segment of the weld horizontal distance is 25 millimeter but the vertical distance is completely zero because they are aligned in the same line 
Now, if you have this information in hand, we can write down IX, which is sigma IX0 plus A I times D in Y direction power by 2. I start with the top flange, which the moment of inertia about X is 0, plus area is 100 times T, and the vertical distance is 100 millimeters. And I have two of this because I have one flange on the top, one flange on the bottom. And then the other one, which is T times 200 millimeter power by three divided by 12 plus zero. The area is 200 T, but the vertical distance between the center line and the center line of the entire weld is zero. So it's it's completely zero then 100 times 100 power by 2 times 2 plus 200 power by 3 divided by 12 so it will be 2.67 10 power by 6 times t millimeter power by 4 for i y sigma i y zero plus i i times d this time in x direction power by two i start with the flange again i y will be t times 100 millimeter power by three divided by 12 plus the area is 100 times t and then the distance in horizontal direction is 25 millimeter power by two as far as we have two segments or two identical segments in uh, top and bottom flanges. Then for the other part, which is vertical weld segment, I Y is zero plus area is 200 times T. And then the horizontal distance here, we have 25 millimeters. So it will be 0 0.42 10 power by 6 times t and ip easy to calculate 0 0.42 plus 1.2.67 it will be 3.1 10 power by 6 millimeter for okay t i just forget millimeter power by 4 now let's go for another example that X bar and Y bar needs to be calculated. Assume that we have one angle welded as an unequal length angle in one direction 8 millimeter and the other one 120. Assume that this is the weld. When you are calculating the fillet weld, you just need to sketch the weld, not the cross section. I select two baselines for X and baseline for Y. Then I calculate this one. Area will be 80 millimeter or let's go with L. L will be 80 millimeter. X will be 40 millimeter from the base and Y will be zero in the vertical direction. For the other one, length is 120 millimeter x is zero and y is 60 millimeter from the base in vertical direction now simply we can write down x bar equals to sigma li xi divided by sigma li so it will be 80 millimeter times 40 millimeter plus 120 millimeter times zero divided by 80 millimeter plus 120 millimeter. 80 times 40 divided by 200, so it will be 16 millimeter in horizontal direction offset from the baseline. Sigma Li Yi divided by Sigma Li, so it will be 80 millimeter times zero plus 120 millimeter times 60 divided by 80 millimeter plus 120 millimeter. 
12060 divided by 236 millimeter. Now we have the exact centroid of the weld in this direction 16 and in the other one 36. And now we can go through moment of inertia. For the first ix0 is 0 as far as t is going to be powered by 3 and iy0 will be t times 80 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12. For the other one ix0 will be t times 120 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 and iy0 is 0. Again t is going to be powered by 3. Then we can write down moment of inertia of the weld about x-axis. Ix0 will be 0 for the top segment of the weld plus the area which is 80 millimeter times t times now we need to consider d in y direction which is 36 millimeter plus the other case is t times 120 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 and the area is 120 times t and now the distance between the centroid of this weld segment towards the uh, weld centroid total weld centroid is 60 minus 36 here is 60 to the baseline and 36 is the centroid iy iy0 is t times 80 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 plus t times 80 millimeter times now we need to go with the horizontal distance for iy which is 40 minus 60 40 millimeter minus 16 millimeter power by 2 and for the other case iy is 0 i can write it down here plus area is 120 times t times now d in x direction between the segment of the weld and also the y axis that we have in the centroid of the weld is 16 millimeter so ix will be 80 times 36 power by 2 plus 120 power by 3 divided by 12 plus 120 times 60 minus 36 power by 2 3 168 100 times t millimeter 4 and iy will be 80 power by 3 divided by 12 plus 80 times 24 power by 2 plus 120 16 power by 2 80 power by 3 divided by 12 80 24 120 times 16 so it will be 11 94 60 70 millimeter 4 and ip will be ix plus iy which is 316800 so it will be 4.4 10 power by 5t millimeter 4 that's the end of this video it was not related to weld design it was just a, a review of how to calculate the geometrical properties of a weld instead of area we need to consider a weld as a line if you consider the area also you will get more or less the same value and the accuracy with this method is quite enough for the engineering purposes but if you want to write a code you can consider all the matters and here and there you can find in internet uh, some kind of uh, simple equations how to calculate x bar y bar ix iy uh, they are coming exactly with the same concept in the next video i will go through the calculation of the stresses in any locations of a weld and after that we can continue with the directional method thank you for watching see you next time bye